Today on Computer Tech and More, we're going to be taking a look at the J5 Create USB 4 AK Multiport Hub. And, um, well, let's just open up the packaging on this. Pretty darn nice. Nicer than a lot of the other ones I've looked at. And let's get in there. All right, so here's the hub. It's, well, that sounds like metal, but it's a very cheap found sounding metal. An easy way to check if you're questioning whether the case is metal or not is to feel it. It feels relatively cool to the touch. It is most likely metal. And uh, let's do a quick walk around. It claims that this is a 2.5 gig ethernet port, which is always great to see because I do believe that that's where everything is going. It does have an HDMI 8K at 60 Hertz. That is what that's rated at. Um, note that that is a that you need to check your own laptop to see if it will be able to function at that. But that's what this port is capable of achieving maximally. So they are labeled on the bottom. We've got two USB 3 A's at 10 gig. We have a USB C at 10 gig and a power in. So it looks like we got some vent holes there, which is pretty cool. So I actually realistically need three USB A ports. So I would need an adapter. I will have another video up on my channel either before or after this, where I'm going to be testing out a bunch of adapters because I may end up needing it. But this one overall feels pretty good. The main reason I was interested in this is because it was rated at USB 4. Um, so USB 4 is capable of maximum 40 gigabyte per second, but obviously this is not. This cable right here at the end is only up to 10 gig, 10 gig. So a little bit of over advertising here, I think, on their part. But we're going to be testing out its full capability. I do have a number of SSD NVMe based um, external hard drives. And I'm going to be plugging in all three, testing out the capability. Uh, unfortunately, I can't do longevity testing, meaning how long this can operate at like full speed before, without overheating, which uh, depending on your use case is a concern for these kind of things, but in general, you're not going to be loading up with like three SSDs and moving a ton of data all the time on it. But um, I'll be able to do it for like uh, short bursts and try to demonstrate that as best as I can for you all. All right, let's get into testing it. Welcome to my multiport series where I'm going to be taking a look at a bunch of different uh, hubs. I found myself needing a different one for my home office environment for when I work from home. So I'm going to be taking a look at uh, basically this grouping to see which one best suits my need, if any of them. And I hope you stay tuned and enjoy. Speed test directly plugged in. And this SSD is the Sabrinth um, Rocket Nano 1 terabyte. And this is the result. Now let's check it with uh, some of the USB devices. Okay, I got the IJ5 Create all hooked up. It's registered as USB 4. So in this test, this is basically fully loading the the data transfer speed as well as the power capability of the device. I have overloaded a few of these, meaning that they start to act a little flaky. So this is actually a good like redundancy test to see just how good a quality it is um, to be if it's worth considering. And this is a 10 gig, which means that it should be fully capable of uh, a thousand megabytes per second. And even though the box says that it's USB 4 slash Thunderbolt compatible, it's no surprise that it doesn't actually register as a Thunderbolt device. So you have to take everything with a little bit of grain of salt. Wow. Okay. One of them is operating. So they should be additively uh, equal to around a thousand megabytes per second. So clearly one of them is being loaded first and then the other two are kind of following at a slightly different rate. So even though these 
add up to higher than a thousand megabytes per second doesn't mean that it's actually able to achieve that it means that when they each drive finished loading up the data that's when it started implementing it and then so this one probably slowed down at the end but it's still averaged out to be this read after it's three passes going to the device thermal temperature on it it feels cool to the touch which is good to know um i don't know if this will be the one for me i mean i like the 2.5 gig port but only has one hdmi which makes it more or less equivalent to the one i have now and since it only has two USB A's and I need three USB A's, I'm left in a similar situation. So it's pretty clear that the reading is not happening exactly sequentially because one of them isn't at right yet, but the other two are. And they're operating fairly closely, but exa not exactly lined up. So it's not doing a purple perfect uh, apples to apples test that I was really looking for because this one just did it first while this one is kind of waiting there. Let's see what's going on in um, Task Manager. Uh, okay. So clearly it's glitching a little bit and something is going on to read because I'm only picking up one of the drives right now. And it should definitely have, well, you don't even see the C drive. So uh, that's a little bit of a... Uh, a wonky thing the C drive should always be there ah, and there they all are so they're not being loaded up at the exact same time oh well but they are all powered simultaneously which is more or less a good stress test on this thing and it's staying nice and cool to the touch so that was, that little ventilation that they included on it is working properly unfortunately I don't have an 8k monitor to test this in and um, I don't have a 2.1 uh, series um, HDMI cable so I can't really test out my 4k display and I figured out I must have gotten a little bit of a glitch in there because the one drive over here is not reading but the activity is definitely at 100% and it's not actually doing anything so we got a glitch in the system somewhere along the way so where does that leave me with the J5 Create? Well, if you only need one display out and you want 2.5 gig and you need two USB-Cs and two USB-As, this is certainly a perfect little device. Um, this could be a good replacement for my Thunderbolt dock that I have hooked up to a different computer and use the, um, the LAN port on it and I don't need the display out and then the USB ports would actually be uh, functional for it, but um, well, I think it's it's got a little bit of a glitch going on, and I was really looking for something as a cheaper solution just for my uh, home office computer as opposed to a personal computer, um, because work isn't providing me one. Anyways, different topic. So I think it's a good little device. Definitely is cool to the touch and is operating more or less looking as advertised. So if this has the port selection that it's looking for, I think that this might be something good for you. If the port selection isn't what you're looking for, well, um, look somewhere else, or you may need to just have multiple hubs or docks or devices plugged in rather than doing a one plug solution, which is what I'm actually attempting for. Otherwise I see no point in replacing uh, the little dock there that I got already. Anyways, thank you very much for watching my video. Hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and More. If you've got suggestions for future videos, please leave in the comment section down below. And uh, have a great day. One fast little correction. This first USB port is only power in, is not data. So if you need three USB ports, this will work well for you.